Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is a galaxy known as Centaurus A. This is technically our neighbor. And today I wanted to discuss something that was recently discovered in regards to the jets that you see right here that may redefine how we see other astrophysical jets out there in the universe. Because apparently, they actually act as a kind of a particle accelerator for thousands of light years. Let's talk about this and welcome to Anime. It's really difficult for us humans to imagine what it would be like to look at all of this in radio waves. Now fortunately today we've created quite a lot of different maps that allow us to kind of imagine this, like for example this one right here from an Australian university, the tool known as the Glimoscope, allows us to imagine things in uh, radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays and so on. Here if we were to look at the Milky Way in radio waves, it would look very different from what we see in visual light, in optical light. And as you can see, there is this really unusual spot right here, right above the Milky Way, that's not actually visible, or almost not visible, in optical light. As you can probably guess, that's the galaxy we're going to be talking about today. This right here is the Centaurus A, the nearest radio galaxy to us, and also one of the more brilliant and more visible radio galaxies out there. And even though in reality, if you were to approach it, it would probably look something like this, as a matter of fact, we're not entirely sure what kind of a shape it even has, because um, there are a lot of uncertainties about this galaxy right now. We don't even know its true distance. It could be 10 million light years away from us, but it also could be 16 million light years, which is about 4 to maybe 6 times as far away as the Andromeda galaxy. But more importantly, we're not sure if this is a typical elliptical galaxy that has a very unusual flat shape, or if it's some sort of a lenticular galaxy, or something in between. So there are still a lot of things we don't really know about it. But even though in visual light it would look like this, in radio waves it looks very very bright and extremely different from anything we've ever observed. Mostly because of the distances and also because it's very active in terms of the actual production of energy coming from within it from the so-called AGN or active galactic nuclei. And in this particular picture you can even see where all of this sort of starts. Now even though it is very bright in radio waves, it's not particularly exciting to look at it in other frequencies, even though it is quite visible um, even in optical light and is technically the fifth brightest galaxy we can see uh, with a typical telescope. But here, unlike other active galaxies like the famous M87 and its very long jet that you can see right here, most scientists always believed that it was really more of a radio galaxy and we really shouldn't be looking at it in other frequencies, especially higher frequencies, because there was nothing else for us to discover. But turns out we were kind of wrong about it and we just learned something completely different about these jets by studying the Centaurus A jets. So first of all, today we know that in the middle of this galaxy there is a very very massive black hole about 12 times more massive than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, approximately 55 million masses of the Sun. And scientists pretty much always believe that this black hole was responsible for producing these jets and for essentially creating all of the effects we're observing here as well. Now we're not entirely sure if it's really the effects of the accretion disk or if it's somehow related to the black hole itself, but we do think that it all happens kind of at the center. At least that's what we thought originally. For example, by looking at other jets, we know that a lot of X-rays and gamma ray radiation usually kind of starts here as well. So we always believe that the center produces all of the energy, and then it kind of spreads and slowly loses its energy as it moves away from the black hole. But nobody ever questioned if that's the reality, especially in regards to some of the nearby galaxies like M87 or Centaurus A. Nobody ever questioned if there's anything else happening in these jets that could actually accelerate matter even more, essentially creating the equivalent of a kind of a particle accelerator, many of which we have here on Earth, similar to this one right here, known as Tevatron, in the United States part of Fermilab, although the most famous one is probably CERN in Switzerland. As you might imagine, these particle accelerators are responsible for accelerating tiny tiny particles to extreme speeds and then colliding them together to produce a lot of different energy and a lot of different subatomic particles that are then used to study all sorts of various phenomena in the universe. But not many people imagined that these jets that we have right here in different types of galaxies could also act in a similar way. But turns out that they actually do. 
So for Centaurus A galaxy, the jets that are produced as a result of the activity of the black hole only move at approximately 55% of the speed of light. This is relatively slow for a typical astrophysical jet, which normally approach speeds of about 99% of the speed of light. And even though the radio jets here are roughly around a few million light years in length, it also has quite a lot of X-ray jets that are a few thousand light years long as well. They're not as strong as the radio jets, and they're not as easily visible, like for example on this map right here, if you were to look right here in the X-ray radiation, you're not really going to see much. However, they are still there, and we can even find uh, certain types of gamma ray radiation coming from this region as well, which does create a few questions that scientists previously uh, didn't know how to answer. And one of the major questions here was related to certain X-ray emissions and gamma ray emissions that occurred along the jet as well. Not to the same amount as the radio wave emissions, but they were still enough to be visible. And these X-ray and gamma ray emissions were not very easily explainable right away. It's as if something was re-accelerating the matter coming out from the middle of the black hole all across the jet's length and was essentially causing more X-rays and gamma rays to come out as this matter was re-accelerated in a very similar fashion to a particle accelerator here on Earth, which would also produce very similar types of energy. And this study right here may have finally resolved these mysteries and these problems, definitely suggesting that there is indeed a re-acceleration of matter across these jets for millions and millions of light years, at least in the radioactive galaxies. And the way that they were able to show this is by detecting very highly energetic gamma rays that can only be possible if there was some kind of a re-acceleration of matter coming from the regions along the jet right here. Which of course suggests that in radio galaxies at least, these jets can act as these really really tremendously large matter accelerators that create conditions very similar to a particle accelerator where matter is continuously given more and more speed until I guess at some point it runs out of energy and the particles are released into the universe. In other words, the matter itself doesn't just get accelerated at the center of the galaxy near the black hole, it's also continuously re-accelerated across the entire jet for a very, very long time for many, many, many light years. And one of the interesting resolutions that this provides is in regards to the observing of various, very highly energetic gamma ray particles that we've been detecting coming from somewhere else in the universe. Sometimes we don't really know what causes these particles to be created. Something really powerful must happen there. And because these radio jets are so tremendously large in size, it now can actually explain the origin of these unusual observations of these highly energetic gamma rays that we've detected many times in the past. So these extremely long and extremely large astrophysical jets act not only as particle accelerators, but also the generators of some of the most powerful energy in the universe as they accelerate that matter. And due to the sheer size of some of these radio jets in the universe, it's no surprise that we've been detecting these gamma rays coming from some unusually empty regions of space. As a matter of fact, some radio galaxies, like this one right here, known as 3C236, can create such tremendously large jets that they create some of the largest structures in the universe. The size of this radio jet and this galaxy is roughly around 15 million light years across. Which of course means that they probably also produce these gamma rays coming from various locations across the jets, which of course, if detected here on Earth, would look like they came from middle of nowhere in the middle of the universe. This also means that radio galaxies seem to be extremely efficient at creating a lot of energy across the universe, and are also extremely efficient at, well, essentially spewing out lots and lots of matter in all sorts of directions. They're basically like the fountains of the universe. Although in this case, these fountains don't just produce matter, they also seem to produce tremendous amounts of energy. But this is only in regards to radio galaxies for now. We don't really know if this applies to all astrophysical jets. Radio galaxies do seem to produce these, but they only form a very small part of all different galaxies out there. So I guess in some of the future videos, we'll try to find out if other galaxies do this as well. And if so, it does seem like we may have underestimated these astrophysical jets and their power across the universe, and it seems like they actually form these unusual structures that can literally create energy themselves through the action on other matter around them. And this is something that a lot of scientists would love to investigate, because maybe it will allow us to create something here on the planet to create more energy as well. 
all in all, it's a pretty interesting discovery and it's really interesting that it came from a galaxy very close to us, a galaxy that's actually pretty well known. Although unfortunately we don't really get to talk about it very much because there are not that many studies about it. Centaurus A is a really awesome galaxy, but I guess for now that's really all I have to say about it. One unusual thing about Centaurus A is that, apart from not knowing exactly what shape it is and how far away it is from us, we're not even sure why it's active to begin with. Scientists suspect that it's probably because of a collision from another galaxy, and maybe that's why it became a so-called starburst galaxy where it now produces a lot of different stars as well, but right now there's really no actual definitive proof of anything. We just know that it's very active in radio waves and it's very easily visible with a radio telescope. And now we've also learned so much more about its radio jets, something we've never known before. But until we discover more, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support the channel on Patreon, and maybe support the channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, you can also find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.